Hey, what's up? I'm Tommy West, and today I'm gonna tell you why the Moto X Pure Edition is my favorite phone this year. First, let's start with customization. The back of the phone you see here, this is actually the phone, not a case, is bright lime green with my name engraved in here, actually my Twitter handle, at Gotham Tommy, which I did on the online store. They call it the Moto Maker, and that's because I got to choose everything about this phone. The front color, the back color, the texture, and an engraving right here on the back. So some people have mentioned to me that engraving my Twitter handle on the back of my phone might drop the resale value a little bit. I don't think anyone wants to walk around with at Gotham Tommy on their phone, but it's totally fine with me. I wanna keep this phone. It's really awesome, and it just starts with the customization of it. All right, next up is design on this phone, and I really think Motorola put a lot of thought into this. The last phone I carried around before this was the Nexus 6, and that was noticeably bigger, which has its benefits and its drawbacks. Yes, a bigger phone might be better to watch some movies on and things, but this is smaller and it compacts the pixels a little bit, so you still have the same resolution, but a much clearer image. Now, more important to me than watching Netflix or YouTube every once in a while is daily usability, and with the screen a little bit smaller, my thumb can reach right across, so I don't have to struggle with two hands like I did on the Nexus 6. And the screen on this is beautiful. It has the same resolution as the Nexus 6, but the pixel density is much tighter, so you get much a better picture on this than you do of the bigger phone. Next up was battery on this thing, and I have to say I was really pleasantly surprised. Now back to comparing this thing to the Nexus 6, although it has a bigger processor and a smaller battery, the battery life on this thing is actually really good. Now unlike Samsung, who in my opinion destroys the beauty of the Android interface, Motorola keeps it mostly intact, hence the Pure Edition. And while they still add some of their customized apps and the ability to talk to the phone and wake it up without actually touching it, they don't really mess around with the purity of Android. So if you're a fan of Android, you're gonna like this. It's not very clunky when it comes to overlaying with proprietary apps. And add to that, when Motorola updates this thing to Marshmallow, they also promise to remove their proprietary apps because all the things that they did are now baked directly into Android. And in my opinion, that's a really awesome promise for Motorola because they can focus on the hardware, which they're obviously getting right, and stray away from the software, which companies, again, like Samsung, tend to get very wrong. All right, elsewhere under the hood on this thing, the processor on this thing is spectacular. Everything floats along really smoothly. And if you're into gaming, this is a great device to do it on. It's really smooth. So if you know me from the radio, you know I'm into EDM. And if you're into any music, really, you're gonna love this phone. The speakers on this thing, the stereo speakers on the front here are really loud. One of my biggest critiques on Motorola's Nexus 6 was how quiet it was with the headphones or the speakers. They were there, but they were relatively quiet. This thing is actually so loud that sometimes if I have the volume all the way up and I'm playing music, I actually have to lower it down because it's filling the room way too loud. So if you're into listening to music in your phone, another huge point for the Pure Edition. All right, now the best for last on this thing, and that's the camera. I cannot stress to you how much I love this camera. All right, first and foremost, the last phone that I think got the camera as close to right as possible was HTC's One M9. You can actually watch the review to that video by clicking up here if you missed it. The one biggest gripe I have is that no phone thus far has been able to get low light photography really right. And while I'm not saying Motorola 100% nailed it here, there's definitely a little bit of room for improvement. They definitely got closer than any other phone I've played with. I've been able to get some really cool shots at night or in bars or other places that are kind of dimly lit with this thing that I couldn't get with other phones. And while I still sometimes have the need to jump into an editing app like Snapseed and brighten the photo up a little bit, it's not that bad and there's not that much grain from the darkness. Now, if you're more into selfies, and I try to avoid those as much as possible, but yes, even I will take a selfie, the selfie cam on this is perfect. Yes, I'm actually calling it perfect. The camera is really wide angle, high megapixel, and has a really wide aperture to get a lot of light in, even in low light situations. So if you're at a bar, or hanging out with your friends at night, or completely wasted and drunk, you're gonna get some cool photos on here the next morning when you wake up. Now overall, if you can't tell, I love this phone. I'm really happy it has my name branded on the back here. Uh, I'm in love with this thing. It really feels like Motorola put a lot of thought into this phone with fine details. Everything from the screen size to making sure your thumb can get across the screen, to how we actually take pictures in our lives with our camera phones, and to how we wanna just interact with our phones. 
And I will say the Moto Maker Store scared me a little bit of designing my own phone from scratch and then having to watch it ship from China all the way to my desk and get this thing finally. It took about a week, but it was totally worth it and I mean it. Now I talked a lot about the Nexus 6. If you missed that review, you can check it out by clicking up here. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Periscope, all the social media, at Gotham Tommy. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here or going to youtube.com slash Gotham Tommy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.